Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here is your latest integral of the day. I've put this one on my Calculus 2 exam a few times. Um, we have the indefinite integral of 3e to the 4t plus 12e to the 2t plus 4 over e to the 2t plus 4 dt. So pause the video, try it on your own. I'm going to jump right in and I'm really curious to see how you guys solve it if you approach it differently than I typically do. So First thing I notice is that if I look at just these two terms and I factor out their greatest common factor, I'll see the denominator appear again, but then that's not the case with the four. So I'm actually going to split this into two integrals and write this as 3e to the 4t plus 12e to the 2t over e to the 2t plus 4 dt plus, and then separately, the little four at the end gets its own little integral, four over e to the two t plus four dt. All right, now from here, I'll call this guy integral number one and then integral number two, and we'll tackle each of them separately. So if we focus on the numerator and integral number one, like I said, three e to the four t and 12 e to the two t, we can factor out a three e to the two t, they have that in common, and then I'm left with e to the 2t plus 4, which is just beautiful because that's exactly what's sitting in the denominator. And then we can go ahead, cancel out e to the 2t plus 4. And now I'm just left with integral 3e to the 2t dt. Oh, how fabulous, how relaxing. So antiderivative is just going to be 3. Keep that constant along for the ride e to the 2t and then divide by 2. We don't need to use sub at this point. Hopefully you've done enough of these. You see the pattern. So this will be 3 halves e to the 2t and then I'm going to say plus c1 because I want to save my plus c with no subscript for the very grand finale final answer. Okay, that first integral was hardly any work. So maybe the second one is going to be more involved. Otherwise, this would be a boring video. Okay, 4 over e to the 2t plus 4 dt. Okay, what to do from here? Well, you know, a lot of the time when you see e to the 2t, it's helpful to think of it as e to the t squared, okay? And then I'm thinking, all right, we probably need to make some sort of substitution. So let me go ahead and let's let u equal e to the t then du would be e to the t dt. And then before you have a panic attack, don't worry, I know there's no e to the t up here, we're just gonna rearrange this. So I have one over e to the t du equals dt. But remember, this e to the t is u. So then I can just say that one over u du equals dt. So I'm gonna replace dt with one over u du, four is gonna stay in the numerator minding its own business, and then this will be u squared plus four. Got it? Okay, then from there we can have another discussion, but so far, so good. So I've got four, let's just put the du up there, why not, over u times u squared plus four. Are we okay? Okay, good, now from here, I would just jump straight to finding the partial fraction decomposition of the integrand. So let's do so. Partial fraction time. So the denominator's already factored. That's nice. U squared plus 4, that's an irreducible quadratic. So let's make sure we set this up correctly. U is just a linear factor. It's not even repeated. So I'll have A over U plus... Then u squared plus 4 goes in the next denominator, and this will need bu plus c, linear expression, in the numerator. Now multiplying everything through by u, u squared plus 4, we're going to get 4 equals a times u squared plus 4 plus bu plus c times u. So 4 equals au squared plus 4a plus bu squared plus cu, when I multiply everything out. 
Okay, from here, let's solve for a, b, and c by equating the coefficients of our like terms from both sides of the equation that we have here. So u squared, I don't see any u squareds on the left, but I have a u squared plus b u squared on the right, so 0 must equal a plus b. And then u to the first, I don't see any u to the first on the left, so that must equal, oh, c. I meant to highlight that, not cross it out. 0 is c. And then my constant term, which is basically coefficient of u to the 0, 4 must equal 4a. Oh, perfect. So that tells me a is 1, and therefore b is negative 1. All right, so now we can rewrite our integrand as follows. We have a over u, so 1 over u, and then b is negative 1, so that'll be minus u over u squared plus 4 du. Okay, very good. Now, anti-differentiate term by term, antiderivative of 1 over u, ln, absolute value of u, minus... And then you may or may not need to write out the full substitution here to evaluate the antiderivative of this term. We've already used up u, so pick some other variable. If you have to write it out, I would say let's let t equal u squared plus 4. And if you're going to actually write out and change your variables, split this into two integrals. I'm just going to lay it out but not actually do it so I don't have to go through all that work. Then dt would be 2u du. Notice I only have a u du, so I'm going to pick up a 1 half when I take the antiderivative. That's all I think to myself, and I don't actually write out the full u sub. I don't need it. So this is going to be minus 1 half, then all of this would be the argument for the natural log. So you'd have ln absolute value u squared plus 4, does that make sense, plus C2. Once you've done enough of these, it's like I don't need to write out the full substitution anymore. Now, let's go back to the original variable. Remember, u was e to the t. So this is ln. e to the t isn't going to be negative, so I'll just write it as e to the t. I don't need absolute value. Minus 1 half ln. This is going to be absolute value, but I can just switch to parentheses. e to the t squared plus 4 plus c2. Almost there. Natural log of e to the t. Oh, that's just t. Minus 1 half ln e to the 2t plus 4 plus c2. So we could just put this all together and be done with things. Go about our day. So we have now 3 halves e to the 2t plus t minus 1 half natural log e to the 2t plus 4 plus c. And then we have to tell the people c is c1 plus c2. And then you know what we have to do here? We're going to box this with pride for a job well done. Beautiful. Okay, now I am super curious, like I said at the beginning, if you guys solved it differently, took a different approach, please let me know in the comments down below. I love to see it. And I will be back with more integrals of the day. I'm also going to record the solutions to the Calc 2 final I just gave last week. Um, just give me some time. I'm off this week and then summer school starts the week after. So look at that. I have some time off for once in my life. All right. Thank you guys so much for your support. I hope you enjoyed this integral. Subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. But leave me a comment, even if it's just an emoji. It helps with the algorithm and engagement. So I would really appreciate it. And you can also follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Math with Professor V. I'll be back sooner than later. Bye, guys.